How's it going? We will pick up where we left off from the initial safety video. We know that you've probably created compliance training in the past, and we wanted to give you an opportunity to rethink how you introduce your learning content. So let's have a look. The shop is heated in winter, but it is not air conditioned in summer. You need to pay attention to the proper procedures to keep from becoming a heat casualty. Stay hydrated, drink water and or sports hydrating drinks before your shift. Eat low fat, healthy meals. Your body needs solids to metabolize the water. Use electrolyte drinks if needed, but sparingly. A 10 to one ratio is recommended. Get plenty of rest. Avoid alcohol, caffeine, and nicotine. Be aware of certain medications that cause dehydration. Wear cotton or cooling clothing. Monitor your body for early signs of heat illness. Recognizing hazards is the most important part of your day. Every time you change tasks, locations, or environments, conduct a comprehensive hazard assessment. Things to look for include general housekeeping, slip, trip, and fall hazards, electrical hazards, equipment operation, equipment maintenance, fire protection, work organization and process flow, work practices, workplace violence, behaviors, awareness, impairment, ergonomic problems. Emergency procedures or lack thereof, a JSA must be completed before any work begins. JSAS must be approved by a qualified supervisor. The supervisor is responsible for timely completing the JSA. Employees are responsible to participate in the JSA process and must adhere to its final determinations. A copy must be kept on site until the task is complete. When the job is completed, the supervisor overseeing the work should forward it to the safety manager for review. Previously submitted JSAs on similar work should be referenced when crafting new JSAs to help identify obscure hazards. If a JSA has not been completed by a supervisor for the task you are doing, it is your responsibility to complete it. Use the book provided with this training to complete your JSA. A JSA focuses on identifying hazards associated with specific job steps and the controls needed to minimize harm. A risk assessment code is determined by the severity of the hazard and the probability of it happening. Once we identify a risk, we will look at how to best control risk beginning with PPE. We may change procedures. We will use guards to isolate you from Tay hazard. We can replace the equipment if that is what is required. The work we did to create best-in-class electrical disconnects is a great example of this. There are a couple of terms that you need to understand to know what you can or cannot do. First off, let's talk about an authorized person. This is an individual who has been approved or assigned by the employer to perform a specific type of duty duties or to be at a specific location. Authorized persons have generally received specific training and or certifications required by OSHA and the employer to perform specific tasks or to work around specific hazards. An affected person is an individual who is not authorized to perform a specific task or to work with a specific hazard but whose proximity to a specific hazard requires them to be aware of both the hazard and the employer's controls for that hazard. Employers have the responsibility to notify affected persons of the type and magnitude of the energy sources around them. The shop is not the only area you can get hurt if you are not aware. The office has several hazards to be on the lookout for. Watch out for spills in bathrooms and break rooms and clean up immediately if discovered. Be aware of blind corners when walking. Never walk and look at documents or your phone at the same time. A proper workstation setup is necessary to reduce muscle strains and repetitive motion injuries. Avoid sitting or standing for too long in the same position. Inspect all electrical equipment connections and power cords. Never daisy chain power strips together. Never leave file cabinet or desk drawers open. Keep office areas free of all cords, boxes, and slip, trip, and fall hazards. Ensure all cups have lids and never place them on your desk directly above power strips, wall outlets, or power cord connections. A cluttered and or dirty work area causes accidents. Everyone is responsible to keep their work area clean and safe. Clean up between jobs and at end of the shift, disposing of trash and waste in approved containers, cleaning up any drip spills immediately, and placing equipment and tools away as you are finished with them. The following areas must remain clear of obstructions, workstations, aisles, exits, fire extinguishers, and emergency equipment, all electrical breakers, controls, and switches, eye wash stations, first aid stations, AEDs, 
If any material is spilled, contaminated, Oregon falls where it can harm persons, equipment, Oregon. The environment reported immediately to your supervisor. It is important to understand the type of fire before you can fight it. Classifications are based on the fuel source. Class A, ordinary combustible materials such as paper, wood, and cloth. Class B, flammable or combustible liquids and gases such as greases, petroleum products. Class C, energized electrical equipment and circuits. Class D, combustible metals such as magnesium, titanium, zirconium, sodium, lithium, and potassium. Smoking will only be in designated posted areas with a butt disposal system and fire extinguisher. No smoking areas will be marked. Portable lighters cannot be used to start acetylene torches. Use the butt cans located around the outside of the building. Do not just throw the cigarette butt on the ground. Gasoline and other extremely flammable liquids are not allowed for cleaning. Bulk quantities of flammable liquids will be stored outdoors and away from buildings. Small quantities of flammable liquids shall be stored in approved safety containers located far enough away from any spark creating operation like welding. Flammable liquid storage tanks must not be stored closer than three feet apart. Flammable storage cabinets must be labeled flammable, keep away from open flames. Flammable liquids must be stored away from ignition sources and adequately ventilated. No hot work is permitted within 25 feet of the paint booth. No hot work is permitted within 25 feet of the laser without FR barriers. All hot work areas must be inspected for flammable materials before hot work can begin. All trash must be disposed of in a work area before hot work can begin. Access to fire extinguishers must not be obstructed.